So now after we've given them some behavior, let's also add in some ragdolls. To use ragdolls, we need to set up the agent first. So I'm going to go back into this agent setup. And ragdoll simulation is a big subject and I've done a few courses about this already. So feel free to check them out if you want something more in depth. But for now, I'm just going to show you the fastest way you can get this into ragdoll territory. You need to do a few things. Step one is to add collision shapes and you attach them to the different joints. You add these shapes and you try to have them match up the geometry as close as possible. And then after that, you set up limits between the different shapes and how they are allowed to move in relation to each other. And then after that, you're going to have a node that automatically looks at the limits and shapes and sets up constraints based on these. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to start by adding a collision layer. So I'm going to have a collision. So an agent collision layer. You get all these dots on the different joints. So I can just click them and it will add shapes on these. Try to be clever and match it up. And then if you want to change them, you have these controllers, you can try to match it better. And yeah, and then you just add the shapes like this. But for us, it's even easier because we are using Mocha Piper 3, so there is a preset for this already. So we can go to this here and then take the preset here, Mocha Piper 3. And now you can see it's set up for us already. And this could be a good guide if you want to set up your own characters and you can see how side effects has done it. So that's the first step. And the next step is to set up the limits. While the agent collision layer is part of the agent's definition, because it's an agent layer, the limits are not. So you need to put that off to this agent definition cache. I'm going to drop down an agent configure joints. And I have this agent edit, by the way, here, just to make sure he's in a rest pose. And then I can go and add these limits by clicking on these dots. You can see it's already setting up limits somehow. And that is just because by default it's using the animation clips and set up limits based on how the agent is moving in the clip. But we don't even have to do that because just like with the collision shapes, we have a preset, so we can just go mock up by three. And now we have all the different limits set up. So now we're going to see if it works. We can drop down a test simulation ragdoll. And I'm just going to plug that in here. And let's see what this gives us. So you can see he start and then he falls down. Excellent. And you can do fun stuff. You can add some forces to him. You can set this to 5 and set some crazy rotation on him maybe. Something like that. And see what that gives us. So wee! Oops. See that again. You can see fun stuff. So it looks like it works. And uh, just to give you a brief introduction, what you need to do, I just gonna select allow editing of contents. So we can go into this node. Usually I build everything from scratch, but just to make this a bit quicker, I just gonna go into this node. I'm gonna tell you what the different parts are. Then I'm actually gonna use one of the shelf tools to add ragdolls to our simulation. Everything for speed. So if we go in here, we can see we have this agent constraint network, and that is the node that is setting up the constraints. So it's basically just look at your limits, and then it's going to set up constraints based on them. It also has this option, if you have no rotational limits, then we can have it pin the shapes. And what it actually is doing in the simulation, it's going to use this to set up a hard constraint. But they call it a pin constraint for some reason. When you're working with crowds, you can see that here, it's like pin constraint, but it's actually a... If you look here, it's actually a hard constraint. So anyway, yeah, so you have these the constraints goes out from here. And these are, if you know anything about constraints, you know that would just be a bunch of polylines uh, with attributes on them. And then you have the agents going in here. So in here, you can see we have a multi-solver. And that is just because the ragdoll simulation is driven by a bullet solver. And we also have a crowd solver. So we're going to have a crowd solver, and then it's going to solve the bullet. And here you can see the constraints. This node, the constraint network, is pointing to our constraints. And then here we are defining the constraints that we have in that constraint network. So we have a hard constraint and we have a cone twist. And yeah, that, that's it. And yeah, we have also have a ground plane that it collides with. So 
that is a very quick introduction to ragdolls and now let's add it to our simulation